this video we're looking at comparing two population proportions and we're going to be using a confidence interval to do this. So we're going to walk you through the steps that we use to um, do this comparison of two population proportions. So we've already talked about how to compare means and so now we want to do the same thing. We want to compare two groups population proportions. We once learned how to do a confidence interval for a single population proportion. If we wanted to estimate just a row for some group, say the divorce rate, if we wanted to know the true population divorce rate, we learned how to estimate that using a confidence interval, and we used a four-step procedure. Or we're going to do something very similar. We're going to use four steps, but now we want to compare two populations. So we might compare row one versus row two. Like we might say the divorce rate in the United States is greater than the divorce rate in Canada. And we might want to eventually do a hypothesis test for this claim. Or we might want to form a confidence interval that will show whether this is true or not, right? So the idea we're going to look at first is confidence intervals. Afterwards, we'll discuss hypothesis testing. So let's start with the first thing, which is, you know, what kind of data will I be given in the problems? What kind of information will come in the problems? Well, in the data step, which is our step one, remember, for confidence intervals, in that step, we're always going to be given a sample size for each group that we're looking at. And remember, there's going to be two groups, so we're going to have like an N1 and an N2. This should seem similar to what we did when we had the independent t-test, the only thing this is going to be comparing proportions and not means. Um, then we'll have an x value for each group. The x value is the number of subjects having the trait you're interested in. And then with those together, you can form the p-hat. So I do want to say that p-hat is sometimes given in place of x, because if you have p-hat and n, you have all you need. So you might get the p-hat instead of the x value. Or they might tell you, you know, 500 people out of 1,000 had this trait, and then you know your p-hat is 50%. So remember, your p-hat is defined as x over n, the same as it's always been. So you just divide those two quantities in order to get p-hat. So that's generally what's given in the problem. From there, since we're dealing with a confidence interval, we can also get this quantity, which is the Q hat. And that Q hat quantity is just a complement of P hat. So if P hat is 40%, Q hat is 60%. If P hat is 30, this is 70, so on and so forth, right? And then Q hat 2 will be also derived. And then finally, you know, in all data steps and confidence intervals, we have a confidence level. So you're going to have some confidence level provided in the problem, and that will lead to an alpha. So we're going to need a confidence level, which will then, of course, help us get alpha. Then we'll have step two. And step two that we do in this problem is to get a critical z value. The reason why I say z value is this is going to be a large sample size problem always. So we're always going to see large sample size if we're working in an elementary stats class is we're going to be using ultimately the normal approximation to get the confidence interval. That normal approximation requires that the sample sizes are of a certain size, so you're typically going to see pretty large n's here. So we're going to expect to get a z alpha divided by 2 value. And again, for a two-tailed or two-sided confidence interval, we'll have alpha divided by 2. And we know how to do that from the confidence level. That's something we've done lots and lots in our course, and essentially z alpha divided by 2 um, hasn't changed. No difference, even though it's for proportions here, that value remains the same um, idea. Okay, and then for number three, step, the third step in the process, we always use that step to calculate the margin of error. Now, the margin of error requires, remember, the table value, z alpha divided by 2 in this case, times a standard error. The standard error here is actually this expression that I'm going to write under this radical symbol. It turns out that the point estimator we're going to use for this problem is going to be p hat 1 minus p hat 2. So we're going to subtract these two p hats. We're going to try to find the difference between the proportions. How do we compare proportions? We take a difference between them. We subtract them, and then we see what that gives us. For example, if we subtracted them and got 0, it would mean there's no difference between the two proportions. They are the same. If we subtract them and get a positive number, that means something. It means, say, for example, proportion 1 is larger than proportion 2. If we subtract these two numbers and get a negative, it means proportion 2 is larger than proportion 1. So that sort of information right, is, is gained by subtracting these two things. So our point estimator is going to be p hat 1 minus p hat 2. And that point estimator is going to have the following standard error. 
So that's what we have to do is put this standard error here and then put it together with the table value to get our margin of error. So the standard error is going to be p hat 1 times q hat 1 over n1 plus p hat 2. Oops, I wrote a 2 on top of my p instead of p hat. There we go. So it'll say p hat 2 q hat 2 over n2. So basically it's the complementary pairs p hats and q hats together um, divided by their sample sizes added together, right? So that's essentially the standard error. And then finally in step four, once we've calculated that margin of error, we do the easiest step of the process, which is simply to go ahead and fill in the point estimator, p hat one minus p hat two minus the error. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side, however we'll add the error, but it's still gonna be p hat 1 minus p hat 2, and then plus the error, and that'll finish up our set of um, steps to find the confidence interval to compare two population proportions. Okay, so we use the sample proportions as our point estimator for the difference between the two population proportions, and we've performed these four steps, which will eventually give us a confidence interval which we will learn how to interpret, just like we interpreted the intervals that subtracted two means, right?